it's 2022. And whether or not you're ready to admit it, skinny jeans are out. Sorry if this is the first you're hearing of it. You don't have to be ruled by friends in fashion if you don't want to. But chances are, if you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering what we're all wondering. What do I do with my perfectly good skinny jeans that I am no longer allowed to wear, lest I be perceived as old, out of date, and unfashionable? Enter the flip. And welcome to The Leopard Lodge. If you're new here, this is a channel all about doing creative projects at home. It is well known in the fashion industry that styles tend to repeat themselves every 20 years. This is kind of just basic common knowledge. It's a rough number. But more or less, that's about the calculation. I'm not here to shame you out of wearing your skinny jeans. You are your own person, you don't have to follow trends, you have autonomy over your fashion and your closet and your life. I'm just letting you know that that's what's happening in the fashion world. And while I myself am not glued to the trends and generally follow my own vibe, I like to at least loosely follow this. Okay, so what do I do with my perfectly good skinny jeans now that I'm apparently banned from wearing them Vassal police! Ah! We well, could store these in your closet for the next 15 years and be ahead of the game next time around. Possibly even sell them as vintage then. This is my 1980s acid wash skinny jean that is actually from the 1980s. Thrift stores are flooded with these things right now and nobody seems to be buying them. What are we to do with all of these unwanted pants? It's such a waste, and quite frankly, a lot of these are probably going to end up in the landfill. Enter the flare, the bell bottom, the boot cut, whatever you want to call it. First seen on sailors in the 1800s, it wasn't really until the mid 1960s that we started seeing this trend take off on land. There were certainly eras that popularized the wide leg pant. You definitely see this in the 20s, and the 40s, but the flare, mind you, did not really come around until somewhere in the mid 60s. And they dominated fashion into the late 70s. While they had quite a good run, flares fell out around the late 1970s with the rise of the punk movement. We didn't see flares again until about 1996, when they were reintroduced as the boot cut. And this time they stayed on the scene for almost exactly 10 years. One day in 2006, everyone seemingly woke up, threw out their flares, and were wearing skinny jeans and flats like nothing had ever happened. I have a visceral memory of realizing what had happened. And being very much the person I still am today, I immediately got to work trying to figure out how to make all of my existing pants into tapered skinny jeans, inspired by the punks of the late 1970s. Because I've always been a person who doesn't want to get rid of perfectly good clothes. Certainly not ones that are in good condition and fit well. Not to mention not wanting to spend more money on new things just because the style has changed. I mean, that's how capitalism works, right? That's what they want you to do. Skinny jeans are out. That's according to the CEO of Levi Strauss, who says wide leg jeans are the new vogue. CEO Chip Berg also says the fashion world could be in the early stages of a new denim cycle. That's all part of the plan. So today we are doing the opposite of what 17 year old me did, turning my skinnies into flares. I pulled these pants during my closet clean out video a couple of weeks ago, which you can watch here where I separated my clothes into three piles, sell, alter, and donate. So this is the first of potentially multiple videos in which I will be altering some of those clothes. Start off by figuring out 
how high up your pants hit your knee, more or less the length from your ankle to your knee. Which will be on me about 15 inches. And mark with sewing chalk or a straight pin. Using a seam ripper, first remove the stitch that holds the hem of the pants. Once that's open, you're pretty much just going up the pant leg like that. For sake of everyone involved, I'm going to speed this up. Work your way all the way up the pant leg until you get to your marked placement. Measure the current width of the ankle laying flat. In my case, it was six inches. Keep in mind, the real measurement of this is double so it's actually 12 inches. Also measure the new length now that the hem has been let out. In my case, 18 and a half inches. Use these measurements to determine the size of the triangle that you're going to cut out. Since I knew I wanted my jeans to be about a total width of 21 inches, I made the bottom of my triangle 10 inches, allowing for half an inch seam allowance on each side. This means that half an inch would be used to make the seam and wind up on the inside of the pants. This gives me a total of nine inches from the new fabric that will be seen on the outside of the pants, plus the 12 inches that already exist from the black denim. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> You'll want to choose a heavyweight fabric for this, something that closely matches the weight of the denim that you're working. You can use actual denim or canvas, in my case, I'm using upholstery fabric. It's from this awesome Etsy shop based out of New Orleans, and I will link it in the description below. I've made several purchases from them, and I'm always super stoked on the fabrics I receive. To make your actual triangle, measure out and mark the additional width of the bottom of the pants. In my case, 10 inches. Find the center of this measurement and mark that as well. Then measure your total length up from that center point. In my case, 18 and a half inches. Draw a line from the corner of your width to this point. Repeat on the other side to form a triangle. Cut this out and use it as a pattern to create a second triangle. I'm not going to say that you must do this on the grain line or the weft. Probably the grain line would be better but I did do it on the weft to conserve fabric. The important thing is not to do it on the bias. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can watch a quick short on identifying parts of the fabric here. Now it's time to sew. I'm sure this could be done by hand with a bit of patience, but I'm going to use my home machine because it's easier. <laughs> Sorry. Start by turning your jeans inside out. Line up the shortest side of the triangle with the hem of the pants and the right sides facing each other. The right side is usually the side that looks nicer and will be facing outwards at the end. The other side is called the wrong side and this will be inside the garment at the end. Begin pinning all the way up until the points meet on the longer sides of the triangle. Start at the bottom of the other side and pin this up as well. Repeat on the other leg. With your machine set on a straight stitch, start at the bottom of the pants. Go backwards and forwards a few times to hold the stitch in place. This way, you don't have to bother tying the threads together to hold the stitch at the end. Sew up to where the points meet at the knee. I actually wound up going with something closer to a quarter inch seam allowance, but I'm not too concerned about having an extra half inch width. Repeat the reverse forward, reverse forward motion again to finish the stitch. Do the same thing on the other side starting at the bottom again. 
And of course, you will repeat this all on the other leg. These funky scissors that look kind of like an alligator's mouth are called pinking shears and are used to finish off a raw edge. It is important to finish off a raw edge in some way or else the fabric will fray and eventually the seam will open. Since the edge of the black denim was already finished, I only needed to apply this to my upholstery fabric. If you don't have pinking shears, I will link a video below from another creator who explains multiple ways to finish off raw edges. The next part is totally optional, but you know I'm a perfectionist. I chose to do what is called a top stitch. I sewed the two raw edges that I had just finished down against the denim side of the fabric. This stitch will be visible on the outside right next to the seam. This is our seam right here. And this is the top stitch, which holds the two edges inside down. This will just help everything lay more flat and look more seamless. If you skip this step, I definitely recommend at least ironing the two edges in one direction. Time to hem. Luckily, we already have a guide to follow because we seam ripped out the old hem. Simply fold the edge up. This will likely happen naturally on the denim part. And you can just carry this line across to the new fabric panel. I think the next step will be easier if you tack this down, at least just on the new fabric. On the denim, it'll probably just do it naturally. Then we're going to fold it over on itself again to hide the raw edge. Once again, following the guide from the denim across to the new panel of fabric. I found it easiest to fold, quickly pull the pins out from the initial fold, hold down firmly, and then repin in place. Use a straight stitch to sew the hem down. Turn those pants right side in, iron if necessary, and give those babies a twirl. Do these awesome pants not make this video worthy of a thumbs up? Personally, I am absolutely in love with them. I have worn them every single day since I made them, and it has been really hard not to share a spoiler on Instagram. Speaking of which, if you're not already following me on Instagram, you should be at The Leopard Lodge. With a slight nod to my younger self, they are the perfect, more mature, elevated version of pants I was wearing 20 years ago. And I feel pretty good about it. For those of you who can't seem to let go of your skinny jeans, they'll be back. So don't worry, I will surely wear skinny jeans again, but not for a while. And that's all I've got for you today. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more mending, altering videos, or if there's any specific fashion trend you would like me to cover. I don't think anything has been ostracized quite like the skinny jean though. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.